Hello in Kahuma. Aren't you looking lovely? Now, it's not only one in Kahuma, it's all in Kahuma, all Cubs and a Birmingham. And they have managed to make a kill. I can't see what it is at the moment. It's right down in a thicket, but there we go. Oh, look, there's a cub coming next to the, the big male. Oh, playing, <laughs> playing. It looks like it's another buffalo. I can't really see properly, but we'll have a look just now. Oh, the cubs are starting to get active. Well, it looks like we found the Inkahumas at the right time of the day. I wonder they were not interested in those other buffaloes because they're already... Oh, look at that! Happy, happy lions. Oh, swat. Where's my... Oh, my kill's in quite a precarious spot. I'm going to try and see if we can get a view of it shortly. So I just need to... Call this in on the radio. Oh, what do you got? Have they got more than one kill here? Did that look like a little foot of something? That is a small antelope. Foot. Leg. And then there's a, a big kill at the back. So it looks like they might have caught more than one thing here. Hashtag incredible in Kahumas. Stations that it's the whole in Kohuma Pride, and they've got it looks like a Nyari Bamba here, but it's not in a good place. Um, best access is from Galago Pan along that two track that heads to the west. There you go. Hello, little one. As you can see, a lot of the Inkuma cubs are still looking very healthy. I'm just going to try and move, but see if we can see what exactly that kill is. I think it could be a buffalo, but that, it looks like they might have caught something else as well. Oh, sorry, I've got binoculars caught in my... Something else as well. Now, I mean, they must have been watching me because I was tracking them just in here. And, and their tracks everywhere. Anyway, well, at least I spotted them before I became their next meal. Only joking, of course. Is that a wildebeest or a buffalo? I can't even see the horns. Is that a wildebeest? Now then, that makes a bit more sense. If that's a wildebeest, that could be a pregnant female and that little leg that was being chewed on was a fetus. And tax, so if you come along that two track from Galago Mati and you look north and at the junction of those two shkovas, um, they're just on the northern side there. But it looks like one of the Wasatis and the Wanuna might move back down towards Galago Pan. Oh, oh, oh. Are we going to get some, there's some lion flirting going on? Go. 
Wow, high five. That's impressive stamina for a lion, mister. Normally it's over in a matter of about five or six seconds. Well done. And it's just the scent mark, you know. Make sure everyone knows how dominant I am, how glorious I am with my big mane. Just a bit too close for me to move it at the moment, so I'm not going to. Where's that the other lionesses are there behind us, Brian? And they've gone to sleep. Oh, if he goes to the carcass, we could see some. Okay, he's moved off a bit. Now cat in Tampa is wondering, is it unusual for male lions to be so tolerant? There we go, look at that. Do you see that? That's unfortunate, as the kill's just in the worst place. He just chased the lioness off, and in doing that, he also chased the cub. And the try find a spot where we can see a bit better. But I mean, it's right on the slope of this very steep little dry river system. I think we might get a view in here. It is a wildebeest and a female wildebeest, so, and it's, it's pretty much finished, to be honest. Okay, how's that, Brian? Wait, let me just, I need to rearrange for the, the VR, not to take a, a blow from the branch. Oh no, that's not gonna work. Well, he just went to chase them for chasing sake, and he's left them alone now in the light. There we go, look at that. <laughs> he doesn't know what to do. Meat or mating, meat or mating. Now, those two things are massive priorities in a male lion's life. And we're in quite a precarious spot here. And so she wants to feed, he wants to mate and feed. So that lioness he was mating with has moved off a little bit. Sorry about the squeaky brakes. I think that's the best spot we're gonna get for the kill. And I think for now, let's just hang here literally hang on the precipice of this very steep drainage line and uh, see what happens. He's standing behind us, looking down towards the carcass. It is a female wildebeest and it's pretty much finished. Probably caught it during the day today. Okay, she's coming back. He's growling already from a distance. See, there he is. Oh, he's turned around. Will she take this chance? Oh, he's got his priorities torn at the moment. Oh, one of the cubs has come back to the carcass as well. She's sneaking in. Okay, here he comes. Is he going to charge? boy. There's almost no meat left. He's obviously hungry, but he's so concerned about leaving the, the lioness that's an estrus that he doesn't know what to do. Even an adult female lioness, I mean, <laughs> wildebeest, plus the fetus, uh, is not really enough meat for a pride of this size. So you can see it's almost all done. I think that was probably killed during the day today at some point, and you can see what's left. It's not quite like a buffalo. So there is a chance they might hunt again tonight. He's really torn. How incredible are those sounds? There's a 
cub trying to sneak in, so he didn't charge, he took a little low growl. Far more tolerant, and as Cat was wondering, uh, male lions are quite tolerant of the cubs, it's not unusual. They will get upset and angry with them, uh, but they never really react to them like we just saw there, and that was directly at an adult lioness. You know, you can see that's the guy who had the big split in his lip. He can't decide, am I going to eat? Now, why don't you just take the carcass and go lie with it near where she is? That would be the more sensible thing if you were worried about one of your coalition members sneaking in. Cubs coming in. You can see he's not growling at them, even though if, a, if an adult lioness came that close to the carcass, he would he would probably chase her. Oh, here's a little growl at the cubs. So he is quite hungry. I mean, a male needs to eat quite a bit more than a female. And you can see that carcass is almost all gone. Remember, this is 100% live. You are witnessing this incredible line interaction at the exact same time of, as us. And uh, remember, if you want to ask any questions about it, hashtag Safari Live or questions at wildearth.tv. We sit here patiently, see what plays out with the Birminghams and Inkoomas. Let's go see what Jamie's plans are. Well, since the dad won't let them eat, the cubs are playing. Well, they were. This one's just making, making him or herself comfortable. Now, if we zoom in there, you can actually start seeing... Um, few of those early signs of mange on some of the cubs. Now they are they've contracted a bit older than the sticks cubs which is already a positive oh 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 there we go we're gonna go stalk there we go Boom! Look at that, isn't that just too sweet? They are just too wonderful, these little cubs. Oh, got him by the lip. Well, there we go. See, that got a bit more serious. Ears flat. Oops, sorry. Oh, there we go. I'll just take a stick with me. Boom! <laughs> sacked, as I think you say in, in American football. Is that sacked? I think. Rugby would just say tackled. Oh, he's a little, looks like a Tumberti leaf on his shoulder there, a little bit of red. And 
Only is getting some incredible screenshots. Keep screenshotting away. Remember, share them with us. Hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. Or pop them on our Facebook page. You <laughs> just hear that deep growl from the bush next to us. One of the cubs, one of the cubs are playing right on the edge of the thicket that the expired wildebeest is in. There's the male. Standing right. Uh, northwest. Uh, if you come from that little two track that heads west um, from just to the north of Galago Mighty. Oh, cover argument. <laughs> a little bit to the east of where Kurula was. So, oh, I really forgot about uh, our bird quiz a bit earlier. Now, can you believe it's actually, it looked like a white-bellied sunbird. And uh, Cam and Virginia and I, myself, also thought it was a white-bellied sunbird initially. But looking at it again, it, I, I, it probably is a white-bellied sunbird, but it's a very strange morph because white-bellied sunbirds don't usually have that yellow tuft. So I actually am going to send it off to a friend of mine uh, and see if there have been records of a white-bellied sunbird with a yellow tuft. Normally it's the double collars that have that yellow tuft, but there was no red on his chest. And uh, guys, please, um, if you got any screenshots of that sunbird, I'd love, because I didn't get a picture of it, I'd love for you to pop it uh, onto Safari Live or onto my Facebook page and so I can have a look at it properly and uh, see if it's necessary that we go send it off. It could just be a, a variance, and sunbirds do have lots of variances in their colors. So it's probably 85, 90% a white-bellied sunbird, but that yellow, little yellow tuff, tuft is a, has excited me slightly that it might be something a little different. Okay, well, we can't really see all the cubs. They've, they're down with dad or they've gone playing in the, the river I think they're playing in the river okay well we're gonna sit here we can't really get down to that part of the river and while we do that Jamie is back with the Queen <laughs> 